quickly go over the, the outline here of our schedule just to show you exactly where we are with things um, and what we have coming in the next little bit here. So we are now on week number six. So the game plan for week six would be we are basically finishing up everything in terms of chapter five, dealing with the, the systems of differential equations. So we began that last class. We'll be finishing it this class. There's really not a lot to this as compared to everything else. So in terms of where we are with the projected outline, we're exactly where we need to be. So what we have coming up in the next little bit, next week for week seven, we're going to be starting um, sequences and series and different convergence tests. We'll be spending a few weeks doing that. So that's basically the second half of the course, dealing with series so we can look at approximations. Um, so in order to do that, we need to know when series converges to a specific point. So that's going to be our focus. Uh, but do notice that when we come back, Right from the break, the, uh, the Tuesday is going to be test number two. So test two is just going to be covering the material for second order differential equations. So just the, the chapter three material, that's all that it's going to be covering, so all the different techniques. Now I've already created the test, um, and as there was questions beforehand as whether or not, uh, when we're dealing with the non-homogeneous, how are you gonna know whether or not to use the undetermined coefficients or variation parameters? I've specifically gone in and added in which one you should be using. So there is not going to be a confusion on, on that. Uh, basically for both, you're still able to actually use both, but I want you to be able to show both methods. Um, and yeah, that's, that's everything for the, that test. Um, now with the, the way the rest of the term is going to work is basically every other week is going to be a test. So test number three would be coming two weeks right after that one. That's going to focus on the systems of differential equations, and we'll be focusing on some of the sequences and series part. Test four is gonna wrap everything up, except for that last little bit, and then we are going to have the, uh, the final exam. So we're almost there. It's kind of nice, almost the, the halfway mark. Uh, so hopefully things aren't too, too scary at this point in time. So let's jump into the, oops, going the wrong way, jump into the rest of the material here. <coughs> Now, hopefully I do have enough to get us through the, uh, the next little bit here. I realize I didn't have that many slides, but we have enough examples to start playing around with. So last class, we introduced the, the problem. Uh, we took the systems of differential equations. We put this into matrix form, and specifically, we're dealing with we have a homogeneous system. So when we put this into matrix form, it looks something along the lines of x prime is equal to some matrix A times x. So our goal is to find a solution vector x such that when we plug it in or we transform it by a, its output is just going to be its original vector, but each entry in that vector, we're going to have it uh, taking the derivative with respect to t inside of there. So in order to test whether or not a solution is in fact true, again, same thing that we were doing beforehand. We just plug it into the equation. We transform it, and then we see, does its output equal the derivative of the original? And if it does, it's a solution. So we went through a couple of examples, and this is really where we left off last class, was from our last examples, the solution vectors x1 and x2 had the following form. So our solution vectors looked like it had a vector in there, so some k1 and k2, times e to some lambda sub i t where t is our variable of choice at this point in time. And again, we had two solutions, so we had an x1 and we had an x2 from here. So if we generalize this, again, we're only dealing with um, a n value of two, so two, uh, two variables, two equations, but if we extend this out, is all of them true that it's going to in fact hold this form? So that's what we wanted to show. 
So assuming that this is the form, is this going to be true? So where we left off was working this out. So we assume we have the following form. So x is equal to sub vector k e to the lambda t. So same as before when we were assuming that the solution was y is equal to e to the power rt, or sorry, rx. Again, we're assuming this here. We derive it, we plug it, and we see exactly what's going to happen. So if we take the derivative of this, x prime, we're doing this with respect to t. So k is just going to be some constants. It's e lambda t. So e to the lambda t is e to the lambda t t, or sorry, lambda, so we have k lambda e lambda t. So if this is a solution, I should be able to plug it in here. And that's exactly what I can do. So if I plug this in here, what I get is k lambda e to the lambda t, so that's my x prime, is equal to a k e to the lambda t, which I get is exactly from here. Same as before, e to the anything is never going to be zero, so I can divide both sides out by this. This leaves me with k lambda is equal to a k and now we isolate everything on one side. So I have a k minus k lambda and that's equal to zero. Now, the problem was specifically the fact that we have a matrix times a vector and then a vector times a scalar. We really want this as a, a matrix and a vector relationship here, so we can change this slightly, and I can rewrite this as ak minus k lambda i, where lambda or i is just the um, lambda times the identity matrix. So exactly the same as multiplying something by one and turning it into a matrix form, but not really changing the meaning of any of it. And again, setting this equal to zero. So again, if this is a solution, all of this does in fact have to be true. I have two terms on my left-hand side. Both of them have a K. I can factor that K out. So this is A minus lambda I times K is equal to zero. So I have this matrix, A minus lambda I. So some matrix here, times a vector is equal to zero. So if I'm thinking back to linear algebra, I know some time ago, but if I'm thinking back to linear algebra, this is a matrix equation for a homogeneous system, and I know that system is always consistent. There is always a solution, because I can always take K to be zero, and any matrix times zero is still going to give me zero, so zero equals zero, perfect, that's a solution. But here's the thing, we don't want just the zero, we want something specific. So what we want to do is we want to be able to determine what values of lambda can we plug in such that we are going to get a non-zero k. So we want to force a matrix, so we want to force a specific lambda such that we're going to have a non-zero k solution in there. So to force a, a non-zero solution, well, it's only going to have the zero solution if this is an invertible matrix. If we reduce it down, every single column has a leading entry, no free variables, only has the one solution, that's the zero solution. So we want to force it to be dependent, or non-invertible. In order to do that, if we look back at the determinant, if the determinant is equal to zero, it's a non-invertible matrix, and if it's non-invertible, we are going to have some non-zero k that's going to satisfy this. So that's the whole point to this now. We want to be able to find some lambda such that a minus lambda i, so this matrix is not invertible. So in order to do that, looking at the determinants of the determinant of a minus lambda i, we set that equal to zero. We find out what the determinant of this matrix is. We force the values of lambda such that it's going to spit out a zero. These are going to be our eigenvalues. And then from there, we want to find our specific k. Those are our eigenvectors. So in order to solve this problem, assuming that this is in fact a solution, 
plug everything in. In order for this to be a solution, what we need to do is we need to be able to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. So that's what we're doing, going back to linear algebra. So this gives us our general solution. Now remember, we're only doing this for n is equal to 2, so we only need two linearly independent solutions. But this does scale up to n. So in general for n, what we're looking for is n distinct real eigenvalues of the coefficient matrix A of the homogeneous system. And we have k1 through kn being the corresponding, corresponding eigenvectors. So our general solution, our x in this case, is just some scalar c1 times the eigenvector for lambda 1 times e to that lambda 1t. And then moving on to c2 times the eigenvector for lambda 2 times e to the lambda 2t, so on and so forth. Again, for us, it's only going to be the first two terms, but this does hold true for any number of n terms. So that's the form. That's what we're looking for. That's our goal this time around. So given a matrix, we are just looking for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and that forms our general solution for us. Now, it's not going to be that easy. The general case of this is going to be really simple, but there are going to be times where it's going to be a little bit of a pain. So we're going to go through a number of examples of when it does become a pain sometimes, how we deal with that. Um, but we're going to be going through all three major cases. So we'll start off with the easiest case. So exercise four. Our first goal is to put this into matrix form. So I want this in the form sum x prime is equal to ax. More specifically, I only really care about, in this case, what my a is. I don't care about anything else. So I really just need to find a. So a is equal to, and again for us it's always going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. So it's just the coefficient matrix of what I have on the right-hand side. My variable x is going to represent my first column. My variable y is going to represent my second column. So for my first column of a will be 2, 2. And my second column of a will be 3, 1. So I want to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So what I need to do is I need to fill this new matrix, a minus lambda i. So a minus lambda i. This is just my matrix A, so the 2, 2, 3, 1, minus, this is the 2 by 2 identity matrix, so my first column is 1, 0, 0, 2 is my, or 0, 1 is my second column, but I'm scaling this by lambda, so this is lambda, 0, 0, lambda. So doing my subtraction of the 2, it's simply just my non-diagonal entries are not changing because my non-diagonal entries are zero in my second matrix, so I'm subtracting zero, no change from there. The only thing that happens is my main diagonal is going to change. So this is gonna be two minus lambda, two, three, one minus lambda. So that's the new matrix. Now what I wanna do is I want to build the characteristic equation from this, so I have to find the determinant of this matrix, set it equal to zero, and then I'm gonna have something in terms of lambda. So the determinant of a minus lambda i, 2 by 2, we multiply down the diagonals and subtract. So what I end up with here, my first entry is a 2 minus lambda. Its other diagonal is 1 minus lambda. Or sorry, its other entry down the main diagonal is 1 minus lambda. Then I have a 3 times 2, that's going to give me a 6, so I subtract 6 from this. Now I'm going to set this equal to zero, but I'm going to simplify this as much as I can at first. So I'm going to expand everything out, collect all my like terms, make it look nice and pretty. So expanding everything out, I get a 2 minus 2 lambda minus lambda plus lambda squared minus 6, which is going to give me a lambda squared minus 3 lambda uh, minus 4. And now I'm going to set this equal to zero. So that's our characteristic equation. 
So again, if this is a solution, if I want this to work out, this is only going to work out to find lambdas that satisfy this equation. So I have a quadratic, not too bad. My variable is lambda, so it's a quadratic in lambda. So I can use the quadratic equation, or if I can see how to factor this, I can just simply go right from there. Now this one isn't too bad to factor. This is just going to be x minus four, x plus one is equal to zero. Sorry, not x. I just said my variable is in terms of lambda. There we go. So I get my lambda squared, I get my plus one lambda, my minus four lambda gives me a minus three lambda, and negative four, positive one gives me my minus four. So this works out, this is equal to zero. So this tells me that the lambdas that work here are going to be, well, if I have lambda being negative one, I get zero. And if I have lambda being four, I get zero. So I get two distinct eigenvalues. Now that's nice because I need two distinct eigenvectors in order for us to do this. And again, back to linear algebra, if I have two eigenvectors, I know I'm going to get two eigenvalues. Or I should say, if I have two distinct eigenvalues, I'm going to get two independent eigenvectors. And I need it to be, in fact, independent. All right, so continuing working this on, we solved for the first part, we solved for the lambda, so our next step is to solve for our king. So a capital K sub one and a capital K sub two. So K sub one, is going to have the form, I'm gonna look for some um, small k1, small k2. So this is going to be my eigenvector corresponding to we'll say lambda is equal to negative one. All right, so what I'm doing at this point in time, again, just a quick refresher, I'm taking my matrix A minus lambda I, I want to solve for a specific case, so I'm building the augmented matrix, and on my right-hand side, that's just my zero. Because again, I'm solving for that a minus lambda i times k is equal to zero, so I can build the corresponding augmented matrix where on the right of that is my zero, on the left of that is my new updated matrix, where I'm going to plug in that specific value of, of lambda. Now, same as before, and this is a personal preference, because that last column is always going to be zero, we really don't need to include it. We can just focus on the coefficient side of this matrix. We don't need the whole augmented matrix for this because nothing's going to change in that last column. If you want to keep it there, knowing that you're setting it equal to zero by all means, but it doesn't have to be there. So let's work this out for the first one. Lambda is equal to negative one. So let's leave it in augmented matrix form. So I'm taking this matrix here, which I have written out here, and all I'm doing is when I see lambda, I'm substituting in negative one. So this is gonna be a two minus minus one, this will be a one minus minus one. So this will end up being three. Uh, three, two, two, uh, oh, sorry, three. I think that's just two augmented with zero, zero. There we go. And for this, my first column is going to represent my small k1, my small k2. Again, our goal is being able to find this k1, k2 to solve for our eigenvector. So I reduce this down. Reducing this matrix down, I want this into RREF form, or the reduced echelon form of this. This is going to be 1, 1, augmented with 0, 0, 0, 0. So it's in its reduced echelon form. Now I put it back to its equation form. So again, my first column is going to represent my k sub 1. Second column is my k sub 2. So in equation form, this tells me that k sub 1 plus k sub 2 is equal to 0. k sub 2 is my free variable because it's the only one without a leading entry inside of here. 
So if I'm setting this up in standard form, I'm gonna want my basic variables on one side, three variables on the other side. So I rewrite this as K1 is equal to negative K2, where K2 is free. I can let it be whatever I want it to be. Perfect. So if it could be whatever I want it to be, I'm gonna pick something nice and easy. So I'll just kind of note K2 is free. Now I don't want to choose zero because if I chose zero, well, K1 is going to be zero, and that kind of defeats the whole purpose of finding a non-zero eigenvector. So I'm going to pick, again, something easy. I'll let K2 be one. So when K2 is equal to one, or let's say negative one, even better, negative one. When K2 is negative one, I have negative, negative makes a positive. My K1 is just one. So the corresponding eigenvector for this eigenvalue, so for lambda is equal to negative one, our eigenvector is going to be one, negative one. Okay, so we found the first part. So this tells me our first solution, our x sub one, is going to be k, so one, negative one, e to the lambda, negative one, t, or just negative t. There we go. And of course, when we piece this all together, it's gonna to be all possible linear combinations of this, but this is at least the first step. So that's our first solution. Again, we need two linearly independent solutions. So to find my second, I now look for K2. So again, my K2, this is gonna be my vector. I'll use the same thing, so no abuse of notation here. I'm gonna still call this K sub one, K sub two, should come up with something better, but this will do for now. And this time I'm doing this for lambda is equal to four. So the augmented matrix we get, so our A minus lambda I augmented with zero. Uh, this is going to be, A is now negative two, two, three, negative two, augmented with zero, zero. And we reduce this down. So here's a nice little fun part. I don't really need to reduce this down in our, our normal sort of way, trying to figure out what do I need to scale the first row to add to the second row, so on and so forth, because I automatically know something about this, because I force this to be true. I force this to be non-invertible which means I have to have at least one free variable. So in order to have at least one free variable, well, what does this mean? Well, that means this last row here, I have to have this completely disappear. Because if the last row didn't disappear when I put this into reduced echelon form, then I would have a leading entry here, I'd have a leading entry here, I would have a unique solution, that solution would be zero. But we force this not to be true, so I've set this up in such a way um, if I wrote this down properly and I did it, now I did, there we go, that should be a three, that my first row is just the multiple of my second row. So I can automatically write this as negative two, three, zero, 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 zero. I don't even need to think about what that